Dear Dhamma friends, we have come to the first Dhamma sermon of this uh, Kalalgoda English Medium Retreat. May you give your consent by saying Sadhu Sadhu. Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Samma Sambuddhasa Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Samma Sambuddhasa Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Samma Sambuddhasa Dear yeah, Dhamma friends, uh, as a tradition or as a practice, we are using uh, Dhamma sermon to first actually to de develop a amount of uh, respect towards the Buddha's teaching and again to use it and combine it with our practice and uh, again to develop our wisdom or to develop a fair amount of knowledge. Actually Buddha has explained that uh, we need to support our practice in five ways. The first one is related with the ethics and re related with our restraint where we need to uh, bodily restraint otherwise if we are behaving in a bad way in an immoral way then uh, it does not conduce you to our practice so therefore we are maintaining good conduct bodily conduct and similarly we are maintaining good uh, verbal conduct where we are careful about what we are talking so we as much as possible in a retreat environment we have to maintain uh, noble silence because otherwise we ourselves get distracted and the other practitioners also get distracted so noble silence is utterly important because even though our mind uh, we are trying hard if you start talking with others then others get really disturbed and we may be sometimes talking something uh, not really essential and so others get distracted and others may be expecting fair amount of silence and uh, when we are disturbing them so they get really frustrated so therefore it is necessary to maintain noble silence and beyond that going beyond that actually Buddha is asking uh, to maintain <coughs> verbal restraint where we are not uttering any kind of uh, false and again we are not maintain, uh, making any kind of uh, false speech and uh, divisive speech or any useless speech rather we only for necessity we are talking so this verbal and bodily restraint is utterly important because what we are trying to deal with is with the mind which is fairly uh, delicate so if we are not maintaining a good restraint in body and the speech, it's very difficult to restrain our mind because restraining mind is extremely a dif difficult task. So we need to therefore maintain fair amount of uh, restraint in the body and the speech, then only we have some capacity, some skill, some possibility to develop the mind. So therefore Buddha recommends Sila Nuggahita, we are one maintains some morality which is uh, conducive to our practice. Then Buddha talks about uh, Sutta Anugahita, that is what we are trying to do right now, where we need to discuss or rather learn the Buddha's teaching where we ourselves can't find the path. So we need to accept that Buddha is the enlightened one and uh, we have to have some faith on him and uh, we have to listen to his teaching and later on actually it is not a not become a blind faith rather when we are practicing slowly slowly we we starts to understand that what is what he is telling what he has told is utterly true so till that we have to have some faith and time to time we have to listen to him or we have to read a book or we have to listen to dhamma so that we collect some knowledge. So this knowledge, what you call as Suttame Jnana, uh, knowledge gained through listening, through, lis uh, through reading, it is extremely important because uh, we can't simply practice the way we like, rather if we have to, and we have to practice the way Buddha has uh, mentioned, proclaimed, then only we will be reaching the goal which Buddha has explained. Otherwise, if we are simply practicing the way we want, 
then we might lead to some other directions not to the path or not to the goal which buddha has recommended rather something else that we are thinking so therefore we have to be fairly humble in that sense because we have to accept okay buddha is the one who knows and we are simply the followers at the moment later on actually when our practice really resembles with what buddha is telling with his teaching then we actually become very uh, in some sense uh, we become very grateful to him and again we have a unwavering faith because it's no more a blind faith rather we we are able to touch what he has mentioned so that way therefore buddha is mentioning oh, time to time we need to listen to dhamma or oh, read dhamma so that we can understand what he is telling and then still while we are practicing still there could be some doubtful areas certain kind of uh, gray areas can arise while we practice we don't know whether what we did is correct or wrong what we have encountered is uh, proper or improper or what is the action that we have to take at that moment so likewise there may be certain doubtful areas so buddha recommends to discuss such areas with the kalyana mitra who is another practitioner at least we can uh, believe that he has at least passed the stage that i am currently experiencing so we are honestly discussing so that's what we try to do during the previous occasion where we are taking our experience and uh, we are discussing honestly sharing our experiences with our uh, other practitioners and then uh, we have some guidance we have we can clear our path and confidently we can uh, continue our practice and on the other hand buddha mentions uh, that with a scattered mind we can't uh, understand his teaching or we can't really realize the teaching realize the truth so for that we need to have a fairly concentrated mind so this concentration has to be developed so because typically our minds are scattered distracted uh, towards the pa- uh, towards the past or to the future therefore we need to develop mindfulness and uh, concentration so this is something we need to uh, develop <coughs> typical knowledge that we gain through today's various subjects maybe by listening by reading by going to a school going to a university so all these are gathering of knowledge that is this is not exactly what buddha mentioned as the wisdom that he is expecting so the ex- uh, wisdom that he is expecting from us is something that we have to achieve or something that we need to realize first of all we have to develop some concentration and that concentration has to be used to fairly observe fairly uh, analyze investigate what is the present experience so this present experience investigation or observation is something conducive to develop wisdom so likewise there are five factors buddha says the first the morality and then the uh, through the listening or reading that one gathers the amount of knowledge and then through discussions we either gather knowledge or we clear doubts and again through concentration practice we are able to focus the mind concentrate the mind and with that concentration uh, we are applying that concentration to the various phenomena which is occurring in the present moment and we do fair amount of investigation so that actually comes to the development of the wisdom or to the vipassana practice so if one develops all these five methods then it there's a possibility that you are able to achieve fair amount of uh, development or uh, liberation in this very life so thinking in this line so we have taken a particular sutta called chanki sutta this is in uh, majjhima nikaya so this is a quite interesting sutta actually in, on last month we introduced this sutta so there's a interesting incident happened during the buddha's time as you know buddha travels with uh, his fellow monks 
uh, followers from uh, village to village from city to city and at this time buddha is visiting one uh, village called uh, opasada it is one of the kosalan village and there is one brahmin called chanki and he is the ruler there he is the owner there actually king kosala has given that particular village as a respect to this uh, brahmin this brahmin's name is called chanki he is not just a ruler rather he is a well respected teacher so there are many other brahmin youths following him there are many youths learning under him so he is a brahmin teacher so this particular village now buddha is visiting so once visited there and the buddha and the monks are staying in a particular uh, forest so the news spread around the village so various uh, villagers now going to see the buddha so this brahmin chanki also got the news that there is recluse gotama has visited his village and there are many others visiting the buddha so he also was thinking to visit him so there are other brahmins who didn't really like that the chanki brahmin visiting buddha because chanki is the really the ruler really the teacher so so there are other brahmins thought okay it's a kind of a disrespect for chanki to visit buddha so they are telling okay you are from a good clan you are well renowned and the king kosala also uh, respect you so likewise they are trying to uh, stop him but chanki has fair amount of faith in the buddha and he is now start to telling the good of the buddha he is telling the it's not only me recluse gotama also from a good family good clan and at his youth he has gone forth and again uh, there are many followers to the buddha and he is with this and this uh, qualities likewise he is giving a very f- comprehensive qualities of the buddha and he is, has now decided to visit the buddha now he is visiting the buddha that means the chanki is now visiting buddha not alone by with his uh, fellow students there are many youth brahmins now following chanki and now they all visit the buddha now after initial cordial discussion now they start a fairly deep kind of a scholarly discussion now many uh, all brahmins are now discussing with the buddha and they may be discuss various subjects and at that time there is a very young brahmin called kapatika and he is just 16 years old so you can understand there is a big gathering and at that during that gathering all the all are fairly silent and the, now the most senior brahmins are having a discussion with the buddha and among them there is one young brahmin he is just 16 years old he is not just silently listening but he is interrupting this discussion time to time he is putting his uh, ideas also he is interrupting basically this uh, seniors discussion and so buddha rebuke him buddha is telling okay you just have to wait don't interrupt this uh, elders discussion you know i mean this is kind of a fairly manners so he very much like the this student does not does no manners so anyway at that time you know this the teacher renowned teacher chanki is giving a very good recommendation about this uh, the brahmin youth called kapatika he is telling bante this kapatika even though he is young he is a very bright student he has surpassed all the other brahmin students and he is the brightest student among this uh, group and he has well versed in all the vedas and he has uh, everything uh, learned by heart he is with good skill so he is capable of even uh, putting his words among the seniors uh, discussion so buddha understood okay this uh, particular youth is not just a uh, disturbing our dis- discussion rather he is fairly capable guy so what he what anyway buddha thought okay <clears throat> i'll give him a chance now kapatika also understood okay it's not nice to disturb this seniors discussion so he thought okay if buddha look at me directly if his eyes and my eyes get connected come together 
then that's a sign that Buddha is now giving me the chance to talk. Now he is getting internally this kind of a, uh, understanding, kind of a determination. Okay, if whenever Buddha look at me, okay, exactly to myself, face to face, then that's an indication that Buddha is inviting me to talk. Now he is determined and he becomes silent. Now Buddha understood, okay, now Kapatika has become silent and he is fairly uh, expecting my invitation. And after this initial discussion with the seniors, now Buddha look at Kapatika. <coughs> now Kapatika understood, okay, now recluse Gautama has uh, look at me. Now is the time to have a question, ask a question from the Buddha. Now Kapatika is asking a very interesting question, in a way it's kind of a rebellion question. You know the youths are not always asking a traditional question, but he is asking a little, uh, uh, little rebellion question. So he is asking uh, recluse Gautama, I am using the term recluse Gautama because they are on a different faith. So he is asking now, <coughs> Our teachers are teaching various Vedas and all these uh, books, <coughs> all these traditional uh, books, teachings, and they say this is the only truth, everything else is false. What do you, what do you think about what I am telling? So Buddha is asking now, when you are taking something out of faith, so typically if you really taking out of faith, there's a possibility what you have taken out of faith might carry the truth or might not carry the truth. Even though you may be faithfully believing it, faithfully undertaking it, faithfully studying it, it is merely out of faith. So even though out of faith you are taking something as truth, it might not be the truth. But do you think but you have discarded some other teaching, it might carry the truth. So you can understand we simply, just by blind faith, if we are taking something, then that might carry the truth or might not carry the truth. Then Kapatika telling Bhante, it is not only out of faith, but there these teachings are coming from tradition to tradition, from generation to generation. So, therefore, our teachers are telling, this is the only truth, everything else is false. Then Buddha is asking, now, now these teachers are there, your teachers are there, have they really experienced all this teaching? Have they really realized all this teaching? By heart, by themselves, and then telling, I have realized everything, and it is not just out of faith, it is not just because merely coming out of tradition, Rather, all these things I have realized. This is therefore the only truth. Everything else is false. Then Kapatika honestly say no. They haven't yet realized, but they simply taken it coming from the tradition, from generation to generation. <coughs> and out of faith, they are telling this is the truth. <coughs> then Buddha go into a list or kind of various methods that the knowledge can pass or what we think where the truth is. So one option or one category is called faith. Say for example, there, are, there is a kind of a teaching, there are various teachings are available and we have some faith on a particular teaching and out of faith we believe, okay, this is the teaching, this is the correct, this is the truth. But this might not be the truth. So therefore Buddha is giving a kind of a condition, kind of a flexibility that has to be maintained within a particular person. So even though you take it as the truth or even though you think it, this particular teaching has the truth, keep some provision, keep some flexibility in your mind. Don't take it definitely. Don't come to a definite conclusion, this is the only truth or this may have the ultimate truth but keep some flexibility, some space in your mind, so it might not be the truth. Or this particular teaching might not carry the truth. Something else which I have missed, or which I didn't yet have the faith 
might carry the truth. So therefore keep this provision in your mind. So you, ca you can understand that out of faith, therefore Buddha is simply telling, don't come to a definite conclusion. Then the next category, Buddha is telling, that is called Ruchi. So the first one is called Sadha, the second one is called Ruchi. That there are several teachings available, among them you might like a particular teaching. You have certain connection, you feel like, okay, I like this. It is not merely to the faith, but you like it. But can we conclude, since I like it, really this particular teaching carries the truth? We can't. Because there, are, there may be several teachings available, even though I selected it, even though I like it, even though I have picked that, it doesn't guarantee that it carries the truth. So therefore Buddha is telling, even though you have taken something out of uh, this like, because of your approval, still keep some provision in your mind, keep some space in your mind, be, maintain some flexibility. So right now something, some teaching, some doctrine, right now you, are, you have some approval, you have some liking, but it might be, it might not carry the truth. So always have the flexibility that something else which I have missed or yet I haven't selected can carry the truth. Now these two methods, what you call sadha and ruchi, the f out of faith or out of the approval is very much like emotional. So typically people have some faith, so out of faith they believe. Out of faith they think, okay, ultimately this may lead me to the realization. Or sometimes we simply say, oh this, I like it. I like this particular teaching. Therefore I am uh, uh, believing it. So it's also coming very much like emotional way. There's the other method, Buddha is telling, coming from the tradition, generation to generation, that is called Anusava, where our, say, ancestors have some kind of a teaching and they pass to the next generation, they pass to the next generation. It's kind of an older tradition. You know, in the good old days, there were no really written scriptures, but from tradition to tradition, or rather the generation to generation, orally they transferred. So what is coming out of this oral tradition also might carry the truth or might not carry the truth. So therefore, whoever really in search of truth have to have some flexibility. So that is the Buddha's argument. And then the fourth one, that is called uh, Akara Parivitaka. So now we are coming to another area where you do some kind of a reasoning in the mind. So there is a teaching available and you study it and you do some analysis, you do some reasoning within the mind. So there are facts available and you analyze it, you do some reasoning and because of the reasoning you believe, because of the reasoning you accept, okay, this may carry me to the truth. But still, you can't be 100% sure. Still Buddha is telling, okay, still keep some provision, still keep some space in your mind even though you have, right now you have taken some data and you and analyzed and even though you are right now believing, so it can change. You might carry some other belief, you can get some other data and then what you have believed might be denied. So therefore keep some uh, space in the mind. So this is the third or rather the fourth method Buddha is telling that the certain teaching is presented. That you call Akara Parivitaka. We are you simply take certain aspects of a teaching, some doctrine, and then you think about it. And out of thinking, out of this uh, reasoning, you believe it. The last one is called Ditti Nijjana Kanti. So we are going little bit beyond that. So you do reflective thinking. Again and again you think. Again and again you analyze. And again you come to a kind of a conclusion. They are also Buddha is telling, don't come to a definite conclusion. Still maintain some flexibility. This is the kind of a one who is very much like a search in the truth. So in a way, the practitioners are really searching the truth. So these practitioners, 
so how to maintain this kind of an open attitude rather than simply telling taking the face value rather than simply taking the taking something because i like it that is the truth or simply taking particular teaching because i like it it may lead me to the truth since i have some faith on it it may lead me to the truth since it is coming from uh, generation to generation it is lead me to the truth or since when i am thinking about it if i get some positive answer it might lead me to the truth so buddha is telling don't come to a definite conclusion so then after telling that buddha is telling so this is the kind of a open attitude one has to maintain so this is called satchanurakka the one who really preserves the truth his idea is to preserve the truth right now there are certain teachings certain doctrines are available but his aim is to find the truth so therefore right now what is presented he is not taking as a definite answer <clears throat> see always ready to accept some new ideas accept some new teachings accept accept some different definitions so <clears throat> telling that buddha is telling now this to explain to the kapatika now buddha once buddha has explained that these five methods have true or false answer so you have to come to some other area where you really discover the truth now suppose different different teachings are available and now you are sort of uh, maintaining some open attitude and now you really going to some practice so this is something that buddha taking karpatika or advising karpatika to practically involve with so how one can do that so there are some traditional method mentioned here that say some uh, teacher or some follower some practitioner is there and he is having some pleasant uh, uh, demeanor or he has some pleasant uh, faculties and his behavior is very good he is maintaining some restraint and his speech is good and his uh, bodily behavior is good what he is presenting is good so likewise the the one who observes him slowly slowly develop some faith out of, on him and uh, when faith some little faith has developed then this the new person the one who is observing <coughs> reaching that particular teacher say for example and then he simply start to little associate with him because he has some faith now he associate this particular person and because of the association he starts to listen to some teaching now this person is practicing practicing and he has assumed that he has realized something but the new person hasn't come at all to that level but since the now the new person is associating this teacher now slowly slowly this teacher is giving some dhamma or giving some teachings to the new person he starts to listen he get to know certain ideas to get to know some teachings and uh, once he get to know he does does not stop there rather he memorize it sutta dhammam dhareti he listen to it and he memorize it and after memorizing it so he reflect about it is it true is it proper and is it really lead me i mean it will it lead me to this kind of an understanding so likewise he do some kind of a investigation within himself assume he gets some positive answer then he gets some desire to really practice now so far he hasn't experienced anything still everything is in the mental level everything is only in the rational level but after rational uh, justification he really have some desire to practice he really want to touch it he really want to realize it by himself not out of faith but to really practice and experience it now what he does he now put forth some effort now that is what we all are doing 
So we have some faith and we all ha might have learned some teaching and it may be rational but not yet maybe we really touch the truth. Not yet we have really realized the truth by ourselves. For that we need to practice. Now Buddha is telling, okay, Satichando Jayati tan then Utsahati. That means he put forth some effort. Now, through the effort, now slowly, 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 one is practicing, start to practice. So, in this practice, there are certain different, different levels we might encounter, different, different stages we might encounter. Say, for example, you might have heard the others are telling, okay, I have experienced this, I have experienced that. So, I am also telling different, different things. So, you get some kind of a faith. Still, no real experience. But you get some kind of a faith. And you think, okay, I also have to give a try. This is a kind of a desire arising within ourselves. This is how we are approaching the Dhamma. And then, now we are practicing. Now we are going on, a, say, for walking meditation and developing some amount of mindfulness maybe sitting and we are uh, uh, trying to experience by ourselves. Likewise, we are now slowly, slowly by ourselves trying to practice, trying to experience what the other person is telling. Here the Buddha, what Buddha is telling. And there, we need to understand, so immediately, just by one day, just by a week, just by a month, we might not come to the complete understanding. So there we will understand, so we need fair amount of practice, we need fair amount of effort to really come to the complete understanding. Right now I might have, have a kind of a glimpse of the practice, glimpse of the experience, time to time. Still not yet uh, well affirmed, well uh, uh, touching the, by the heart. But kind of a glimpse of practice may be available to all of us. Say for example, say someone is telling, okay, when you are practicing mindfulness, so your mind get concentrated. You may be able to experience a fair amount of concentrated mind for 10 minutes. But at the moment, my mind is utterly scattered, distracted to the past, to the future. So daydreaming, uh, thinking about various memories and different, different, different things are coming. But Without giving up, we are practicing. Because of our practice, maybe for a, just for a minute, for example, we experience some amount of concentration. So you understand, yes, yes, it is true. Now I have tried my best, but I just experienced one minute, but the others are telling that they have experienced ten minutes. Now you understand it is only I have experienced just one minute, so, how I can make it 10 minutes? So, it's a kind of a practical approach. We are now, I am able to touch, able to experience by myself, not out of any of these five methods, rather by real practice, by putting forth effort, by using our own bodily effort even, that I was able to just experience one minute of practice, one minute of, say, concentration. So, now I have to enhance it, increase it to 2 minutes, increase it to 5 minutes, increase it to 7 minutes, then I would be able to reach 10 minutes. Now, this is just a one stage. We are experiencing fair amount of concentration, which is necessary as a prerequisite to come to the next stage. So, the next stage, so next stage also now, okay, the several others are telling Bhante, I have this, I have that. So I have experienced this, I have experienced that, but not yet I have experienced. The others have experienced, but I haven't experienced. But I have now some practice already available, this is just the 10 minutes of my own experience, 10 minutes of my own concentration, which is still I am far away from the other person's practice, other person's own experience. But now I have faith. So far I was somewhat successful. That also not immediately, not within a day, but I have gone through various difficulties, obstacles and all these things, but I have just 10 minutes of concentration. 
assume now you want to go to the next level okay now we are using this particular concentration try to develop wisdom now so there buddha is using another term called padahati where you are you need further kind of an effort because this concentration practice and the temporarily kind of a blissful state have, have some some kind of a bliss some kind of a taste but when you are using that concentration to observe certain phenomena presently arising you might not experience that kind of a blissful state It, your mind get distracted again you have to go back to the breath again you have to go back to the rising and falling again you fall asleep so many obstacles again arise now you need more effort because the immediate at the initial stage you are you are practicing now you are able to achieve some amount of concentration mind is fairly collected but that alone is not enough now okay someone is telling okay now you use this concentration to further develop wisdom now you are getting to the development of the wisdom and you feel not satisfied you feel not successful now you have to put more effort you have, now you have to put more uh, energy to use this concentration in order to see the real some sort of understanding about the present phenomena assume that you get some idea okay the concentration is able to maintain at least for 5 minutes in a particular area so you get a little pain on your knee and you are now using this concentration on this particular pain and you are able to maintain this concentration on this pain for 5 minutes <clears throat> so what you gather nothing much so it is kind of you might again might get mind get distracted or this pain get uh increased and again you might feel like change in the posture so many many issues much not 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 much of uh, understanding again you have to put the effort so that is why the term padahati is where you are having a fair amount of effort because the wisdom aspect does not immediately arise there are also you need to re- remember okay how i was able to achieve 10 minutes of concentration now i have i was capable of maintaining my mind without distraction just for 10 minutes how it was after say one year before one year so it was extremely distracted extremely scattered but right now okay i am fairly all right i can at least maintain 10 minutes after one year 10 minutes of concentration but now still i am far away from some real knowledge real understanding so there's a beautiful simile oh we'll come to that later say you are maintaining now this concentration on this particular pain again and again again and again you are not giving up you are again and again you are you maintain practice you practice uh, one day assume you are able to see how this pain is arising how this pain is developing or sometimes even this pain even though appears like a one single pain you feel like it is not just the one pain so there are many collection of little little pains are available and they behave the way they like and they are arising and they are immediately passing away another ri- another pain rising immediately passing away and you have no control at all and you are observing it in a proper manner because now you have some experience you have gone through various obstacles with these obstacles you understand what is the amount of energy i need to maintain what is the amount of concentration i need to maintain what is the angle i have to look at it so how what are the other necessary necessary conditions i have to maintain in order to properly understand this pain so all of these things does not merely come from the book knowledge merely come from the faith does not merely come from the tradition merely does not come from the uh, say because of you like it just because you mentally or rationally understood it rather you have to really experience it you really have to put the concentration 
what collected mind to a onto a particular phenomena and you really have to practice and experience it so this has a di- big difference and assume in a particular day you are able to see various facets of this pain okay it is arising it is changing it is passing away and it is maybe increasing maybe decreasing and it is scattered to various different parts different collection of pains are there likewise you get some understanding some perspective of this pain now suppose suppose you are able to find an analogy between your understanding and buddha's teaching that's a beautiful simile buddha is giving in uh, one sutta called pena pindupama sutta buddha is telling vedana bubbulupama now you can recognize because of the rain also happens now buddha is telling in order to come to the real understanding okay now if you consider one rain drop drops on a particular reservoir there are a collection of water and on top of that water there's a rain drop come drops what happens as a immediately water bubble arise and immediately it burst assume there's another drop of water another rain drop drops on the falls on the water and again there's a water bubble so air bubble arise and again burst when it's happening quickly many drops of rain now falling on the uh, reservoir or whatever the collection of water and immediately different different bursts of water different different bu- bubbles of water arising and bursting arising and bursting you can understand now assume the rain happens a heavy heavily kind of a heavy rain now and there's a large reservoir and different now so many water drops rain drops are falling on this reservoir and here and there are so many water bubbles are arising and passing up arising and then bursting so buddha is giving this simile for the feeling not only the say painful feeling but also for the happy feelings and but also for the neutral feeling whatever the type of feeling have this kind of a analogy so when you really experience your say within your own body for example this kind of a situation now you really connect with the buddha's teaching for example it is not simply because buddha is telling this analogy rather now you you yourself touch it you yourself experience it not simply within a day but rather due to again and again practice continuous practice now you are able to experience some very closer very similar experience by yourself now you can understand the parallelism between what buddha is telling and what you, what you are really experiencing and now you have further confidence further faith not blindly but rather by your own understanding but rather by your own experiencing now you get connected with the buddha's teaching now still this is not enough now this is just a glimpse of truth now buddha is telling okay faith this uh, feeling is impermanent Fa- feeling is having a rising and passing away constantly it is arising and passing away constantly it is uh, uh, sort of uh, subject to this arising and passing away you have no control likewise buddha is pumping further information or further uh, kind of an understanding now you are understanding and what buddha is telling now slowly 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 get connected you realize okay yes it is true buddha has mentioned like this buddha is telling it is very transient buddha is telling it is constantly subject to this trans very uh, rapid transition of uh, arising and passing away and i have no control of on that so you get some understanding but still it is a, just a glimpse very momentary and sometimes you all while you are practicing so you might get some kind of immediate understanding it sort of opens your eyes but it 
only lasts for a short period. Again, you get back to the again distractions, again thinking about the past, again thinking about the future, again mind get distracted. But this glimpse of understanding is something that you simply saw the truth. So there's a beautiful simile given in another sutta. Uh, say someone is for the whole whole story. It's a very beautiful simile. It's, uh, that's also available in Majjhimi called Kosambi Sutta. It's giving a very uh, easy to understand simile. Say that someone is traveling in a desert and uh, he is now out of water. Now he is in search of water. Suppose he has some idea, okay, water may be available in that direction. Do you think it is the correct belief? The, now he has some, some belief, okay, water may be available in the east direction. Now he is traveling to the east direction. Do you think he is 100% he is correct? Can't be. 50-50. May be available, may not be available. That's why out of faith we can't come to the complete conclusion. So he can't be definitely come to a conclusion. He, I mean his, his faith, his liking might carry the truth or might not carry the truth. Here the water. His, his faith his selection, his approval or something coming from the tradition might lead to the water or might not lead to the water. But he is anyway assumed that he is maintaining some effort and he is searching and ultimately somehow say he saw some water but it is available in a very deep well. Now just by looking at the water is his thirst, thirst get satisfied? Still he is having a lot of thirst. But he has seen the water. So this has a very big meaning. Where in the commentary, where the commentary says, now this is the Sotapanna. You can see the, how deeper with this telling. Now, now he has seen the water but not yet fully drank the water. He hasn't yet uh, bathed water, but he has seen water. It is available. He is very sure about it now. Does he need to look at various other directions now? He doesn't need to. So that is for sure. He is 100% sure now water is available. He has seen it, but not yet drink water, not yet bath water. This is like Satchanu Bodha, where he has, out of his effort, out of his search, he has come to the truth. He has some glimpse of the truth, but not yet fully realized the truth. That is where Buddha is telling he is a seeker, now only he is a trainer. Very much like, now only the practice begins. So we are very much, most of us are still searching for water. Have you come across water? <laughs> so water is available, today is raining. <laughs> but we have to have some kind of a humble idea. Now this is a kind of an analogy Buddha is telling. So if you really have seen the truth, so you know it is the truth. It is, I am 100% sure now. I don't need to search various other directions now. I am 100% sure now this is the path. This is the practice ultimately bring me to the complete realization. But it is just a glimpse only. Similarly like you have seen the water and you now don't need to search various other directions. Now you have to take various other efforts to get this water now. Either you have to get down to the well, <laughs> jump to the well, <laughs> drink water and bath water and again I don't know whether you need to come up or else you have to find a rope or you have to prepare some mechanism to get water from this deep well. So, in this method, so Buddha is telling, even though one has really seen the truth or really seen the water, not yet fully realized. So, what is the uh, method of realization? So, that is again and again practice. Again and again practice. It is not there is a different method for 
Sotapanna to become a Sakadaga. Sakadagami to become a Anagami. Anagami to become an Arahan. There are no different distinct practices. This is the same practice. Again and again we have to sharpen the faculties, develop the path. Then we may slowly, slowly, uh, very much uh, our, uh, what you call the asavas, anusayas, the influxes, latent tendencies and all these things slowly, slowly we have to recognize they are diminishing out of the practice. Not merely by listening or merely by believing, but slowly, slowly we are drinking water now. We had the thirst, slowly, slowly we taste the water now. Slowly, slowly we drink water now. And we have to recognize, okay, because of this drinking water, my thirst is slowly, slowly reducing. Now, when we really feel that the thirst is reducing, just someone else has to come and ask, is your thirst reducing? Or since you are drinking water that I have to give you a certificate? No, we ourselves have to feel it. It is not someone else come and approve it. Rather, Buddha is telling in this very sutta, it's actually the, uh, there's a, this is a very beautiful conversation going on. And uh, there are these Venerable Ananda, Venerable Narada, uh, and several others who are there in this discussion and they are what they come to the conclusion is even though one has seen the truth even though one has really seen the water it does not merely tell that you are an arahant or you are a completely uh, realize the truth so just a glimpse of realization is there just a simply a touch of what is there so likewise in this particular sutta, in Kosambi Sutta, so they are telling, okay, once you come to the complete realization by yourself, not merely by out of faith, not merely because of uh, you your like, or not merely because it come, some particular teaching coming from tradition to tradition, or simply you think and assume it is there, but rather you yourself have to realize. We ourselves have to touch we ourselves have to feel it. Therefore, there's a beautiful uh, criteria given in this Kosambi Sutta how to verify whether one is leading or whether one really is a Sotapan. So this is a very nice criteria and that criteria is not that someone else is telling. It is not that someone else is affirming or giving kind of a certificate. Rather, the practitioner himself doing his own investigation, his own observation about his own mind. The first one he is telling that is there may be various defilements arising in our in one's mind, and uh, those defilements may not come to a transgression without one's knowledge. You know the defilements are coming in uh, three stages according to the Buddha's teaching. The hidden layer is called the latent tendencies. They are like very much hidden, very much like the they are at the sleeping stage. We can't see them. Now they come to the conscious level. Very much previously they were in the subconscious. Now they come to the consciousness, conscious level. What we call as the uh, first one as the anusaya. Now this is the Pariyuttan, coming to the surface level. So this first criterion telling, now this Pariyuttan Kilesa, this, the surface level or obsessive uh, defilements come to a transgression, how much it has to improve, how much it has to increase. Say you get some anger towards particular kind of animal. And for a typical person, and if he really don't like that particular animal, immediately he might kill it. After killing only he understood, oh yeah, I killed it. Now say for example, there are mosquitoes coming. So das, immediately done, killed. So how far we have come? Immediately transgression. For this particular person, Buddha says, okay, it can't happen. So he has to feel, okay, there's a 
hate arising in the mind now it is in available in the surface in the conscious level now i am feeding it and now it is increasing now i go to the breaking of the precept so this is a transgression so therefore the first first criterion is telling okay these defilements come in, can't come to the transgression without the knowledge of this person so we we ourselves can understand how much of observation of one's mind has to maintain to do this so we ourselves have to check whether is there any kind of a transgression happening within my bodily or verbal or practice verbal living or bodily living is there any transgression happen without my knowledge so if it is not happening without my knowledge okay we pass the first criteria if not that means we need to further develop then another criterion is telling so if there is any kind of uh, transgression happens so this particular person never going to hide it so you know there are various methods available to uh, what you call confess it he doesn't want to hide it rather he immediately understood okay i was uh, in a angry mood so i killed the mosquito so i did the bad thing or i did the wrong thing so i don't need to hide it rather he uh, sort of uh, reveals it there is no sh- kind of uh, showing a good image while being a bad person so this is the second criteria with this telling in this uh, analysis there's another one where when the real dhamma is being taught or being preached so you that particular person ha- doesn't have any kind of wavering mind he is li- thinking something else think listening others something else paying attention to another thing so that is the typical way of listening to something but who has really uh, come to the understanding with this telling so when some dhamma is being taught when some dhamma is being preached he attentively listens to it he attentively wholeheartedly listen to it so that's another criterion and related to dhamma there's another one so when such dhamma being preached so he gets some kind of a joy because now it is no more far away from him he has some connection now with what is being taught because it is no more kind of external to him rather it is very much he 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 has realized something so when some dhamma is being taught he get connected with this dhamma he has realized to realize to some extent now he has real faith he has real understanding and he has his own connection with what is being taught so this is the another criterion so likewise there are seven criterions explained in this uh, kosambi sutta so more and more all of this actually by one's own careful observation of one's mind it is not someone else can see our mind and tell okay you are so and so you are so and so you are at this stage you are at that stage rather the practitioner himself has to carefully very humbly look at one's own mind how it is behaving on different different situations and based on that behavior he has to recognize okay i have either i have to further develop or, or else i have some developed mind another occasion another experience uh, another criterion mentioned there is that he may be he or she may be involved with various other tasks he may have to go to the say office or he has to do his children various uh, attention he may have to do his her husband uh, or his uh, wife's activities or children's activities social activities there are many activities that one may have to involve but he understand okay i am not yet an arahant i am not yet completed the job so again and again he is keeping his an eye to further development so this is another criterion buddha is telling he may he is he is not just merely continuing various other activities and completely forget about the practice even though he or she has to involve with various other activities again and again come back and has his own conclusion 
has his own seclusion and commit himself or devote himself for further development devote himself for further practice this is another one so so likewise so these are all another one is actually by because of this practice he he understand now my defilements are reducing it is not just within a day but again and again he is having some idea having some observation about his own mind and he is continuing the practice and after some time he feel okay it is it is not the same level of defilements i had say 6 months ago available right now so he is continuously maintaining some kind of an idea about the mind and because of this observation he gets some kind of an assessment it is not the same level of defilements that now available so he is now confirmed now this is the practice because he has that's why the when the water is seen he doesn't need to look at various other spots he doesn't need to go for in search of water because what has seen now he has seen the method once the method is sure and when the method being practiced and he has to see that the method is bringing the results method is bringing the benefits so therefore buddha says now he doesn't need to go to another teacher because he himself understand this is the teaching this is the practice so that is actually mentioned even in the satipatthana sutta uh, when someone is practicing say kaya anupassana vedana anupassana chitta anupassana dhamma anupassana likewise when the development happens he confirms he really get some confidence okay this is the path not because the book says but because one's own understanding own uh, uh, observation of the mind will give you some kind of a confidence okay this is the correct path so now i mean typically we go to various teachers we go to various beliefs we go to different different traditions we go to various different methods and try this and that so that is the typical nature because we are not sure whether this teacher is telling the truth whether that teacher is telling the truth whether this teaching is telling the truth whether that teaching is telling the truth so we are not sure so we are searching here and there but when a particular practice is being developed and it is when it is giving the proper results then you are sure for yourself and you don't need to ask from someone else but you are now well realized and you by yourself you understand okay this is the correct path so likewise in this another criterion it is telling now because of the continuous practice one understand okay the defilements are reducing my practice is giving the some kind of uh, tangible results so it is not something out of faith but rather by own understanding he is now continue in the practice so likewise these seven criteria are give criterions are given in this uh, kosambi sutta to verify whether one is leading in the proper path so so this simile and this uh, buddha's explanation happens in this chanki sutta really resembles and therefore we can understand we may be searching the truth we may be looking various traditions we may be looking certain different different teachings but still we have to maintain some flexibility some openness in ourselves because if we haven't yet come across the truth but if we really do the practice and if we really have some glimpse of uh, taste taste of freedom as achan cha says if you have some taste of freedom then you feel okay i have see in the water it is available there now we have to put forth effort now we have to practice to really drink the water to really come to the real touching of the water so that i may completely free from thirst free from tanha free from craving and therefore complete extinction of craving is called nibbana free from thirst free from craving is called nibbana tanha koyo nibbana So with that concluding remarks remarks I will conclude today's uh, dhamma sermon thank you very much for attentive listening